I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Akakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Oh, excuse me for teaching this truth. Also, want to um, acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, I'm going to just go into a quick one tonight. Um, Psalms 12, and, and uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Help Yahweh, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the sons of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Remember, double heart goes into double mind. So we know a double-minded man is unstable in his all his ways. So, you know, we, we, we want to avoid being double-minded in this truth. Let me grab that real quick. I think it's in James. It's either Peter or James. <clears throat> okay, it's in James. So we grab uh, James 1 and 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. All right, and that's the point. When we come into this truth, we don't want to be double-minded. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be uh, involved with the world and then, you know, one foot in the world, one foot in the truth. You want to, you want to stay focused in the truth. Of course, yeah, we're in the world. We got to deal with things. We're in the flesh. But to the best of our ability, just like with the commandments, we don't we want to avoid being double minded. All right. So we go back to Psalms 12 and verse two. And these people with flattering lips, you know. Uh, matter of fact, just uh, last week, the elders were addressing uh, flattering lips because they had a young. A young, uh, young man who went to the camp, and I suppose I, I, I guess he was telling them, you know, he was giving them just too much praise, to the point where they felt uncomfortable, you know. So because they're they're just regular men, and they told they, they were telling the guy or the kid, or I don't know, I, he was a young man in the truth. He they were basically saying, hey, you, you know. He, they made the elders feel uncomfortable because he was he was giving them you know, all kinds of flattering comments. wouldn't wouldn't stop. You know, when you when you're with the elders, you're actually just supposed to really not speak. But when you're with men who are you know of high rank in the truth, you you really don't want to be talking. You can answer if you're asked questions and whatnot, but you don't want to be the one initiating conversation, especially with. Men who are like the elders, you know, it's like it got to the point where they were elder apostle to heart, which he was joking, but at the same time he was, you know, he was addressing it. He said, "Hey, you should go to the IUIC. They like that kind of stuff over there. They like to be flattered." But he, you know, he elder apostle to heart told him, "Hey, just, you know, really, it's it's not not something you want to be doing, flattering people with your words." Verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 3, Yahweh shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. See that? You don't want to be in this truth trying to flatter people, or anyone for that matter, even outside the truth. Let's get uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 8. It says, but because Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Oh, wait, let me see. Did I grab that one? I'm sorry. Daniel 7 and 8. It says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, 
before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by his roots, and behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And, and really, those great things going into flattery. So, just like Esau Eden, you know, he's a flat, he'll flatter you with his words and then he'll stab you in the back. And uh, let's grab that real quick. And first Maccabees 1 and is it 31? Thirty. First Maccabees one and thirty it says, And spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit, for when they had given him credence he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore, and destroyed much people of Israel. Alright? That's what these Edomites do, that's what a lot of these people do. You're in a spirit of Edom, Esau Edom, if you want to be sitting here flattering brothers and stuff. Or flattering the elders. You know, you don't want to be in that spirit. You sound like a kiss ass, you know, when you do that kind of stuff. And right here in, in Maccabees 30, it's it's talking about uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. He was speaking peaceable words to our people, and then he came down on our people, um, destroyed much people of Israel, like it tells you. Just like uh, creepy Joe Biden, creepy sleepy Joe Biden. He was pushing that uh, that that jump shot, you know, the jab. Speaking flattering words, speaking peaceable words, and then come to find out, it, it destroyed a lot of our people. You don't want to be in that spirit of speaking flattering lips to people. All right, back to Psalms twelve and four. It says, "Who have said with our tongue we will prevail?" Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Right? They have no uh, regard or reverence for Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Instead, they, you know, like we read here, they think they're going to prevail. They think they're going to be in good case. They feel like they're... Uh, they're do, um, well, let's get it real quick in Psalm 49, 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Because these people, they don't believe in the truth. And the proof is, is because they don't think the world is, they don't think America is going to be destroyed. We were at camp the other day and and the brother was asking uh, uh, passers-by, hey, you think America's are going to be destroyed? And their answers were either no or I don't know. And it's because they don't understand the truth, all right? Because the Bible it explains to you prophecy, and it tells us, and we have that faith, right? We have that faith to believe that these uh, prophecies are going to come to pass. So... Go back to Psalms 12 and 5. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith Yahweh. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. All right? So Yahweh is going to perform his uh, these prophecies on behalf of the elect. He's going to Avenge the elect, because we're the elect are the poor who are who are being oppressed. The Israelites are the poor. Okay. Well, this is Jeremiah five. Our people are poor because they, they have no they have no knowledge of this truth. 
because remember, when you get the knowledge of the truth, you become rich. These are better than this, this wisdom, this knowledge. It's better than than uh, gold and silver, riches, money. You know. But without it, you're you know it's a the poor is a metaphor for our own people. <clears throat> I can't find the preset that I was looking for. So. Oh, right here. I'll start at Jeremiah 5 and 3. O oh, Yahweh, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Talking about the Israelites. You've been stricken. You've been under the curses, but you're not You're not uh, grieving. You're not sighing and crying like the, uh, like the elect starting out with the prophets. We sigh and cry. For the abominations that are around us. So it says, Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of Yahweh, nor the judgment of their power, the Most High. So, you know, when you don't know to understand this Bible as an Israelite, that's why. That's who the poor is. Whenever you read in this Bible about the poor, it's talking about the Israelites who don't understand the scriptures. It's not talking about the homeless people downtown uh, that you know are on the corner with uh, no money. No, it's dealing with our own people because this book is all about our our, our people, and the poor are the, are the people who are poor in the spirit which the Israelites right now were a degenerate plant. They're poor in spirit, right? And we can actually stay in Jeremiah 2 and 21. It tells you that. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? And that's our people, degenerates. When you look into that word degenerate, it means you're not what you once were. And... You're poor because when you have this knowledge, it's it's better than gold and silver, right? Let's prove that also. <clears throat> we'll go to Proverbs. Proverbs three. In 13 it says happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her so there's nothing that can be compared unto wisdom and this knowledge and this truth we become rich the men who obtain this, the elect who obtain this, because you know, in, in, uh, that's who gets this truth. That's who obtains this knowledge and this wisdom is the elect. It tells you that in uh, Romans. Let's get it real quick. Romans. Uh, Eleven and seven. This is what then. Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Right, so the elect is the one who's going to get this wisdom, this treasure, this knowledge, understanding, which is worth more than gold, more than silver, more than rubies. Nothing can compare to this wisdom that we have. Okay, this is the best thing out there for the Israelites. For anybody, but the only the only the Israelites will obtain it. All right, and it's only the elect of Israel who's going to obtain these uh, spiritual riches, if you will. All right, go back to Psalms twelve and five. I'll read it again. It says, "For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy." Now will I rise, saith Yahweh, I will set him in safety, 
from from him that puffeth at him. And really, all the all the heathen puffeth at us, you know. Um, but Yahweh's Bashem Yahshua is going to deliver us from from these heathen nations, starting out with Esau. All right. When you go into that word puffeth, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get it right here. I'll read it out to you. Let's see what it says. Well, here's a quick definition. It says inflated with vanity or pride. And that's exactly how these um, heathen nations act toward us. They, they're inflated with vain pride, useless pride. And it's always against our people. So the Lord's going to set us in safety from those that puff it up as at us. All right? And that puff, it, like I said, it goes into being inflated with pride. You know, people, really these heathen, or the, even the two-thirds, you know, puffing themselves up with pride, vanity, and it's usually against this truth or against the, the Lord's elect. Verse 6. The words of Yahweh are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. So what's the most pure thing in this, in this uh, truth? Is going to be the uh, the knowledge of the truth. There's nothing more pure than the truth. Matter of fact, I was reading today in Ezra. I think it was uh, was it first or three or third um, Ezra chapter three. Let's see, first Ezra might have been three. Let's see. Yeah, it says, talking about what are the strongest things. Let me see, bear with me, I'm just looking for it. It was like a proposed contest, and it's asking about what's the most strongest thing in on the earth. And uh, some wise men, there were three wise men that, you know, were part of the the uh, contest. And let's read verse first address three and ten. It says, the first row wine is the strongest. The second row the king is the strongest. The third row. Women are the strongest, but above all things, truth beareth away the victory. So what's the strongest thing? If, if you read the whole chapter, it gives you the conclusion that truth, because there's no fault in truth, right? There's no wickedness in truth. There's no, you know, with all the other things, wine, the king, women, they have wickedness in them. You know, they have faults. But the truth doesn't have no fault. It's pure. All right, so you, yeah, you go read that first Ezra and three. And I remember reading this as you know I was probably seventeen years old when I first read this, and I always remembered this uh, chapter, this story. But the strongest thing is the truth, stronger than wine, stronger than the king, stronger than women. You know, this, and it's a cool little uh, chapter to read. Gives us some understanding, some edification. But like I say, the, the the best, most pure thing that you could that you can obtain is the knowledge of the scriptures, this truth. So we'll go to there's no fault in the truth, right? There's no blemish, there's no uh, shortcomings, you know. It's the most it's our priority right now. If you're of the elect, you can recognize that the truth is the priority, right? Above your family, above your kids, above your parents, above your wife, above your above everything. This truth comes first. Psalms 12 and 7 says, 
Thou shalt keep them, O Yahweh. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. All right, you see that? The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. You see? So if you exalt what wicked uh, or vile men, you're just going to, it's just a, uh, a cesspool of more wickedness and more, more, uh, you know, vile men. But the elect is going to put this truth ahead of everything. And Yahweh Bashem Yahashai is going to preserve the elect from every generation, from every wicked generation. And this is our last captivity. This is the last wicked generation and the most wicked generation out of all the generations. And this truth is what's going to be our salvation. That's why it's more valuable than uh, gold, silver. You know, it's stronger than wine and women. There's nothing um, that's superior to this truth. Matter of fact, everything that in the planet Earth is inferior to, to the truth and the knowledge. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and close out that. And, you know, again, no flattering lips. You know, just do the work with sincerity. Because the flattering lips and the pride is going to be cut off. And so are the ones that puffeth up against us, you know, who are oppressing us, who are oppressing the poor right now. Which, like I said, the poor is not talking about the homeless downtown. It's talking about the Israelites who don't have this truth, which is the most valuable thing that we could have right now. There's nothing more important than knowing this truth. Your, your, your wife can't save you, you know, on the day of the Lord. Your, uh, your mother, your father, they can't save you from the destruction. Nothing can save us from the destruction but our faith in this truth, our faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. All right? So we need to obtain the truth. And then this is what we should, as the elect, as members of the elect, the hopeful elect, we should be putting our energy into obtaining this knowledge and this truth. So with that, I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the love unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, the Kakadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.